the idea is to take big ideas, so, so like consciousness today, so it's really like a distilled down version of, you know, maybe a couple of really great new scientist articles, but in, a, in an event space. So, you know, so you've got a big theme and you're, you're trying to tackle the big questions, um, get people involved, get the best speakers on the stage to get people fired up about the science, um, to get fired up about new scientists, I guess, um, and just to start that conversation in a, in a different space. How many people in the room are certain, by show of hands, that they're actually consciously experiencing this talk and the things I'm saying right now? Who's certain that they're conscious? Okay, good. So we got a lot of conscious entities, a few zombies maybe, but for the most part, you're all conscious. I was summarizing uh, contemporary theories of how the brain produces consciousness. So I was summarizing recent research, for example, on the networks of the brain and some of the computational models of how the brain produces consciousness. So if you think about your sort of everyday experience, what the brain is often doing, it's not just passively receiving stimuli, it's actually actively filling in the world with what you expect to be there. So in this classic illusion, you can see that as the face rotates around, we have this incredibly striking perception of it sort of flipping and always being uh, facing us because our brain has basically never experienced an inside out face. So when it sees this, it goes, no, 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 this must not be right. It must be that the face is actually the way I expect it to be. We all have some kind of really strong conviction about what it is to be conscious and why it's important. And I think that when you start to put that under the microscope of scientific analysis, it really can cause some very strong opinion. It seems striking that you know, all of the things that we take pleasure in, taste, Beethoven sonatas, whatever turns you on, it's all actually just electrical and chemical activity, but that seems to be what modern neuroscience is increasingly showing, and that's what I believe. I think if we want to understand consciousness, we need to look in the brain, and we need to look at the functions of neurons. I don't think we need to look at toenails. I don't think we need to look at clouds. I think we need to look in the brain. I've been describing some rather interesting and unusual ways of generating that electrical activity, not the way that it normally should be generated, but by a kind of sensory hijack. So we have a particular kind of neuron in the skin which responds to vibrating touch. We've been working on a rather interesting way of hijacking that system by using a molecule called hydroxy-alpha-sanchul, which is in fact the active ingredient in Sichuan pepper. And Sichuan pepper is a, um, an ancient Asian spice which is widely used and widely appreciate it because it gives food a kind of a tingly sensation. It sets your mouth tingling. So this is perfectly safe. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to rub this quite hard into your lips. Okay, now sit down. Thank you very much. Now, if I've done my job properly, and if this is working, then in about a couple of minutes, you should start to feel a tingling sensation. And the reason it sets your mouth tingling is because the hydroxy-alpha-sanchol in the Sichuan pepper binds to the molecules that form channels in this particular kind of uh, neuron, in the membrane of the neuron, and it induces electrical activity in the neuron, not because there's vibrating touch, but because there's this kind of chemical back door which makes the neuron fire. What I found really interesting about that is it does seem to point out that the conscious experience of tingle simply is the activation of those particular kinds of neurons which normally are attached to mice and the corpuscles and which normally transduce vibration um, on the skin and get it into the nervous system. You can think of lots and lots of other examples where we're doing something unconsciously, as we say, but if it goes wrong, consciousness comes in. And that suggests, and many other examples which suggest it too, but that sort of thing suggests that consciousness is not just there, and it's not just being enjoyed, experienced by us. It's actually doing something or enabling us to do something. I think there's only one concept which is even more difficult than consciousness, and that's time. But I think that consciousness is an even more interesting, and I would say much more interesting concept than time, because it is so personal, it is so close to one's whole existence. And um, 
So it would be amazing, I think, if people weren't passionate about it.